Dith Dallas is here in my part of the world, and welcome for me, Martin Smith, aka Cornish Grandad, to my YouTube channel. I trust you're well and interested in learning how to create movies using the Blender Video Sequence Editor. In today's important video, we'll actually create a movie, importing clips, setting up the Video Sequence Editor, editing those strips together, and then rendering out our first movie. <laughs> In the first lesson of this uh, video editing sequence, we learned the basic skills of how to manipulate and edit our strips. In this session, we're going to use those skills to actually craft a video out of various clips. In the next session after this, we'll then learn how to transition smoothly from one clip to another, and the third session will animate those clips. So first thing we need to do is draw is pull in some video clips. We can use the browser up here, though to be honest with you, I just prefer to use my file explorer. I do everything just dragging me from there. So we have a number of clips here. We've got an intro here, flying saucer intro mp4, which is a vid um, video and audio strip. And then we've got a cleaned audio strip. Used my previous video about cleaning up audio to clean that mp3 file up. So let's just drag this one in and drop it here. And the first thing you'll notice is it's building up a thing called a proxy. Now to paint this whole screen, 1920 by 1080, each frame will take a lot of resource. So a proxy is a reduced quality and reduced size version of this, saved to disk and into memory so that actually when I'm dragging my cursor backwards and forwards during the editing process, it's a lot faster. When it finally renders out, obviously it rendered out full quality. If you see any problems with the quality of this is because it's running the proxy. So that proxy is now finished, so we can actually delete that one because that's the uncleaned version. We can pull in our clean one. There we go. And I like to display the waveform so I can see where everything is. Now, you'll remember that when Blender first starts, it set the video strip to start at frame one and end at frame 250. And our video is obviously a lot bigger, as you can see. So do you remember we go to click the home button? That will frame everything. Unfortunately, it actually does frame it right to the edge and you just actually want to see both edges. So just click once down on the middle wheel and you can see everything. And to select everything, the quickest way is to do A, to select all your strips, view, range, set range frame to strips. And now you can see our start is at frame one and our end is at frame 1180. So before I do anything else, I like to set up my render output because otherwise I forget. So we are going to create a video at 1920 by 1080. That's great. Not changing aspect ratio. The start and end we've just set. The frame rate is 30 frames per second. So these strips, when I uploaded them, were 30 frames per second. We're going to output them to a temp folder. But you can change that if you wish. And I'm just going to outline, download mine to that folder there. I don't want to create individual images for each frame. I want to create a movie. So I'm going to select FMMPEG. And then this encoding box appears and I'm going to use HS264 to MP4. Because I know that will be accepted by YouTube. And because I've selected that, populated most of this for me. MP4 codec is HS264 quality. I can change to high. I'll leave the others as they are. I do want audio. And I'm, instead of choosing AAC, I'm going to choose MP3. So at that point, it's probably a good idea to save this file. Save. I'll save it into captures again. Um, and I call it video editing. There we go. Save that. 
Now, you can probably note that I've got a sound track here. Nothing much happens at the beginning. This is the blank bit where I can delete any background noise when I've cleaned up the sound. Then it goes into my introductory speech and then it goes into my end screen. I can get rid of this front bit. So let's return my cursor to the beginning. I need to select both of these strips. So they both need to have a lines around them. I, there's one of two ways of doing it. I can either left click that one, shift and left click that one. You can see they both have the lines around them. So they're selected and I can drag those together. Clearly, if I didn't have them both selected, then my video and my sound are going to be out of sync. The other way is just to draw a box around them and you see exactly the same result. So with my left mouse bound, left mouse down, I'm going to drag those to the left so that the sound is at the beginning. I'll move my cursor to the left hand side because that's the bit I want to delete. K for knife tool, delete. Drag my cursor up to here. This is where I go into my end screen and I'll use that later. Make sure I select that. K, okay, delete. That's the beginning of my video. The next thing I want to do is I want to drag in a little title clip. So drag that in, drop that down. I'll display the waveform and that just goes, eh, this is my music, blah, 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 blah. So my movie is actually starting here. So I'm going to do page up just to go to the end of that. There we go. Lovely. So my next video strip I'm going to pull in is the actually how to section. So here's my two how to, my movie and sound clip and my clean sound clip. So I can drag those in. So drag that in and drop that down. Get rid of the unclean sound and drag in the clean sound. And it's building up the proxies at the bottom. And change that, display that. And I want to move that one up one. And remember the way to move up precisely so it doesn't, you don't accidentally go to the left or right because you don't want to do that or that, do you? is to do G followed by Y, so it just moves it on the Y axis. And I'm gonna deliberately put that on channels three and four, because later on, we're going to fade from one to the other. So a bit of repeat of what we saw before, clap those two, drag those over, because that's where the sound starts. I can cut and delete that. And this is my little how-to section, so I'm saying I've created a flying saucer. I've then gone in and set some keyframes up here. Uh, next session, we'll actually zoom into the, that little area to make sure we can see what we're doing. Then it goes, well, it looks like it goes a bit quiet here, so we could probably get rid of some of this. Don't think much is happening there. So that's a good point where we can cut here. So we can select, I should say, and cut here. And the technique to close this gap now is with that's already selected. If I grab my two handles by holding shift and left click in there, I've got all four selected. I can just drag those and that reduces that sound gap. While we're here, we've gone past the bit it's gonna play. As you see, that's that line there. So we can do A, view, range, Set range to strips. While we're here, let's just have a quick aside. So if we do page up, we'll jump to that point. Just remind you how to close gaps, etc. So I'm just going to temporarily drag this over here. There's a number of ways of doing it. I can just hit the backspace key and that will close that gap. If I have my playhead at the end, I can do shift and snap, and it will close that gap. Remembering that if I've got an overlap and I do shift and snap, it will overlap them and move it on upper level. The way I didn't show you, but it's also quite useful, is if I just grab these two and pull them left, drag across. At the moment, you know, you've got to be very precise to get them right, but if you overlap them, it goes red. 
And if you then let go, it snaps back to the right position. So that's another way of making sure you've got a nice clean joint and you've got no gap between one and the other. Okay, so I talk about lots of stuff. My cursor's flying around, as you can see, and then I get to the end and what's it say? Let's play that bit. And then we can render that out. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go and render the image and that, rem if you remember, remember render, takes a long time. So I can get rid of this bit, I don't need this bit. Okay, delete that. And I must have a file that says render. There it is. There's no MP3 attached to this because there's no sound attached to it. So we can get rid of that in a minute. Drop that in. There is a sound file, clearly, but if I display the waveform, nothing there. So I might as well get rid of it, delete that. And you're slowly building up the proxies at the bottom while it's doing that. Now this is gonna be very slow and it is obviously quite a long strip. So what I'm gonna to propose to do is we actually speed this up. How do we speed up a, a strip? So when I have it selected, there's an option here that says add effect strip. And one of the effect strip options is speed control. So this has created a green strip that's actually tied to this video strip. So if I change the length of this blue strip, it'll change the length of the green strip. So I need to tell it how fast I want this to be. And I reckon that's, well, let's go five times faster. So with my speed strip selected, go over to my panel over here with set strip selected at the top. It's got a name, which is called speed, that's fine. Stretch input to strips, you turn off. Use as speed is you turn, leave, leave on. And for some reason, this one always defaults to zero when I want it to be one. And this is how fast I want it to be. So if I want to slow it down, I could say put 0.1 in. If I want to speed it up, I could put say five in. So I'm going to make it five times faster. Ah, but I would have expected that to go shorter because it's going, it's not going to, it seems to be taking the same length of time. So what's happening here? It seems to be faster. Oh, and then it goes still. So we need to fix this. If you click on the video strip, one of the options we have down here is time. And the time, it's got two useful bits of information. It tells you what channel it's on, but it also tells you the duration. The duration is 1748 frames. Now we can do simple maths in these fields. So if we click at the end of that, put divide by five. Hey presto, that's now a fifth of the length. It's going five times faster and suddenly it just stops there, which is what we wanted. That's good. But this is uh, 350 frames, so that's, um, what, 11 seconds? It's quite long, and I think it's going to be a bit boring. So I think we should put some music attached to this. I have some music files here. Now, this is a music file that I've downloaded. It's by Otis MacDonald. It is free for me to use, and I can just drop that in there. So now, if you play that. This does, they say, my, it jumped because I haven't moved the playhead. We've got some music from here. I think it's a bit loud. I'm sorry, Otis. I just want it as background noise. So with that already selected on the strips, I can reduce the volume. So put it quieter. And I want it the same length as this, of course. So if I take my playhead to here and I go page up to go to the end, that's still selected. I can cut that and I can delete that. I would like this to fade in and out because it's a bit sharp. I'm probably encroaching on what I'm gonna cover next period. But if I right click, I can do fade fade in and out, and then it will start quieter and go louder. Okay, so we've got quite a long way through our video. Now, um, what we want to do is use the output from this video to create a flying saucer flying through the sky. 
Um, and what I need first off is a background. So if I go to my folder, I've got a single JPEG file here called Gorse in Rocky Valley. It's quite a pretty little picture. So we can drop that in there. And Blender, unhelpfully for me, has dropped it on channel one because channel one's empty and it can drop it there. And it's sat down there and it's made it 25 frames long, which is far too short. We, we could grab this and pull it up, but the alternative way is just to click it and I want it up there. And there's my little picture. And it's only 25 frames long and that's far too short. So I'm going to put 250, I'll put a zero at the end. Okay, so now I've got a picture of Rocky Valley and I could fade this one in and out by right clicking, fade in and out. There we go. So as you can see it starts off gray and it builds up. When I rendered out my little flying saucer, I rendered it out as separate images. So here we can see all those image files. There are 50 of them, 50 ping files that it's generated. Now I can't drag, if I drag one of these in, all I'm going to get is the one. If I try and select them all, I won't get them all. So this is the one time I use an alternative way of getting files in, which is the add option. And there's an add image sequence option. Go to images, there they all are. Now, if you're in a Word document, you do control A to select all in Blender. For some reason it is A. No, you, you could key map it to control A if you wanted to. Select them all, add image strips. And where's Blender put it? Well, let's put it down the bottom again, because that's what it likes to do. So let's just move that up. Notice I'm on seven, eight occupied, so it'll jump eight and go straight to nine. So there's my little flying saucer. I've lost my pretty little Cornish background. And that's because though there's opacity, which you can see with these black and gray squares, it's not showing it. So on here, on the strip option, if we go to alpha over, other ones we won't be using today. And there we go. And what we'll do later on um, in the final session is we'll actually animate this so it flies across into, uh, into the distance, but at the moment it's just wobbling in space like a toy top. So as I said, we've got an end screen that says, thank you very much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. So I need to put that in next. So let's go to the end of page up to go to the end. So I'm down here now. And the final one we're going to drag in is my intro again. Drag that in. Get rid of the sound because I don't want that. I'll just place it in my clean sound. So annoyingly it's put them apart. So let's grab that and move it down one. And I can grab both of those. And I'm going to put these down on the bottom purely because I like to have my intro and extra at the same point, but also it shows you, you can move them up and down. It doesn't really matter. If we display the waveform of this. If you remember, nothing happens at the front. That's my intro. I go into my outro, but I don't start speaking until there. So I can cut and delete those. If I page down, I can go to that's where my image file stops, my background file stops. I can then select those and I can snap those over. And I probably want to tidy up the end. It's probably a blank space at the end, so I can do view, navigation. Um, no, not frame selected. There we go, it's a bit of blank space at the end, I thought there probably was. So I can drag my cursor, I can stick it there, and I can, okay, delete that so if I do home now that is the whole thing done I have a look at a minute we need to set our end frame so the easiest way as I said is a view range set frame range frame so it is so let's have a quick scan through and see what this sounds like this does they say in my part of the world and welcome for me Martin Smith aka Cornish Grandad to my YouTube channel. 
I trust you're well and interested in learning how to create a flying saucer animation. Here we have a very simple model of a flying saucer which we're going to animate over 50 frames. So set on frame 1, we can insert keyframes on location and rotation, set it to 25, we can give it a bit of a wobble on the X and a bit of wobble on the Y and we can set Z to what, two full rotations, we can insert keyframes on that. Then we can take it up to frame 50. We can give it a slightly different wobble just to make it look as if it's flying. We'll give it another two full rotations and we can insert keyframes on that. And then we can render that out. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this tutorial on creating a flying saucer animation. If you have, then please subscribe and click like. Keep in touch and I hope to see you soon. That is the basics of our video. Um, as you can see, we start off with an introduction. We then go into a title piece, how to section, which is the longest section as you'd expect. Then we speed it up and added some background noise as it went through the render process. And now we've set up our scene ready for animation in the last part of this tutorial. And then we said, thank you for very much for watching. It works, but it's a bit clunky. There's no clear transitions from one to the other. So in the next session, we'll smarten this up and add some transition effects and some text and the final one will actually zoom in when we're talking about setting up the keyframes and then we'll animate this flying saucer. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you.